one of the things that's probably the best way to introduce myself is I'm a social and professional misfit. Uh, I'm a simple clinician who's been fascinated by the subject of wound healing for a number of years. Uh, and by skill, guile and daring, I've managed to emerge as the head of the first university department of wound healing in the world. Uh, and we have developed a number of firsts in this subject, um, more by luck than judgment, perhaps. But I also have a role within the school executive in the School of Medicine as the academic lead on in innovation and engagement. In terms of this presentation, uh, I've followed the same format as my colleagues, uh, but with some modification. In terms of the School of Medicine, it's one of the largest schools of medicine in the UK with over 2,000 undergraduate, postgraduate students. 500 academic and 300 support staff, an annual turnover in excess of 50 million pounds, and almost half of that turnover comes from competitive research awards. I guess within the metrics that we're all being asked to, to look at these days, we're in there in the premier division as a medical school. In terms of the I and E component of what we do, uh, there are some technology transfer highlights that we've looked at over the last couple of years in terms of uh, initial patent filings in 2007 and 8 and 2008 and 9, you will see that there are a number of departments who are engaged in innovation and engagement as defined by intellectual property protection. You will see that we are generating a significant chunk of royalty income uh, from the patents that we've already been awarded. In my role as leading on innovation and engagement, uh, we have uh, developed our mission, vision, and objectives. Uh, we do believe that i &E is about bringing research to the people and bringing the benefits of research to society. We have visionary objectives uh, as listed here in terms of innovation, informing policy, and engaging with the public. Uh, and we genuinely believe that the A for B program helps us deliver on all of these uh, components of uh, innovation and engagement. The background to our involvement in A4B goes back to 2000 when we were uh, a CTIC. Many of you will remember the Centers of Excellence for Industrial, Technical and Industrial Collaboration. Um, for many years, we were the only CTIC in the School of Medicine. Uh, we obtained KEF funding from 2007 to 2008 to create a special interest group. Uh, where we had observed uh, that within Wales, on a population basis, there was a greater collection of clinical, academic, and commercial interests focused in wound healing as compared to any other part of the United Kingdom. The initial meeting produced 46 participants from 34 organizations. Uh, we undertook a SWOT analysis and realized if we were going to go forward, we needed to have clear objectives, uh, robust methods of communication, we needed to be inclusive rather than exclusive, and we needed to develop some skills in marketing and selling this concept, not only of the subject, uh, but also of what we were trying to do in creating a special interest group or a network that was focused in the subject area of wound healing. In our second meeting uh, in uh, 2008, we created the Welsh Wound uh, Network. Uh, we developed a strategic plan uh, that were in, focused on implementation, dissemination, communication, true representative of all the stakeholders in Wales, methods to evaluate our impact and to promote this not only in Wales, but nationally and internationally. Where, why wounds and why wounds in Wales? Here's some uh, data from a Medi Wales survey to suggest that wound healing, uh, when we look at com commercial, clinical, and academic, uh, organizations. Wound healing employs around 1,500 people already in Wales, uh, around 100 academic researchers and full-time uh, clinical nurse specialists. There's a commercial turnover over 70 million. Research income to academic institutions in wound healing of four and a half million pound a year increasing. Uh, and the, in the incomes need to be set against the total spend on wound healing for patients in Wales, which is around 150 million pound a year. So what we were awarded uh, in September this year, we are still the new kids on the block, I guess, is the funding from A for B to create the Welsh Wound Network. So here we're talking about a different component of the A for B program, 
where it's support for a network. Uh, it is creating an all Wales initiative. It's a two-year program that will support open meetings, newsletters, exhibition attendance, and bringing together these various stakeholders uh, from different disciplines in Wales. Uh, what we are finding also, and, and, and increasingly so, is the number of commercial interests in Wales that either were here or coming to Wales because of this focus on wound healing. Uh, we have this funding going up to March 2011, uh, and already as part of the different funding uh, that we've had to keep this interest going, is we've undertaken two national surveys of patients within the NHS in Wales looking at the, the development of patients with pressure ulceration. I do apologize for the offensive picture on the right, uh, but I couldn't leave you without one clinical image. Uh, usually my presentations have multiple clinical images in, but I thought it would be too offensive for this audience. But that's the reality of getting old. That's the reality of being sick in the modern day NHS is you well develop skin breakdown, and that's somebody's backside that has broken down and formed a chronic ulcer. The advantage of looking at this subject, which is still in its infancy, we were able in 2008 in reviewing the acute orthopedic sector of hospital uh, beds in Wales to demonstrate that the prevalence of pressure ulcers is 15%. In 2008, in looking at more long-term rehabilitation uh, facilities in Wales, the figure increases to 24%. Nearly one in four patients who end up in hospital with a chronic condition that requires rehabilitation will develop skin breakdown. Maybe on their backside, it may be on their heels, it may be on their ankles, it may be on their knees. But the important thing is to recognize this is a very common problem, uh, challenging for the patients, challenging for the clinicians, and expensive to the health service. What we intend to do uh, following our award of funding this month is to set up a number of open meetings over the next two years uh, to develop alongside events such as this, brokerage events. Uh, we like to short uh, hand this as speed dating for wound healing. You show me yours and I'll show you mine. Um, newsletters, knowledge transfer and improved audit of clinical practice, encourage participation in research because it's still very much an emerging specialty, and really to try and build visibility for wounds in Wales. Wounds are, Wales are wounds, or wounds are Wales, uh, in the sense that this is a very common problem, it's a very expensive problem, and it's a problem that we genuinely believe we have uh, experience and evidence emerging to say that we can make a difference. So in summary, we see that wound healing is a significant commercial activity in Wales already. The Welsh Wound Network brings the commercial sector into close contact, not only with the relevant academics, but also clinicians in Wales. This program of open meetings and other communi com communication vehicles over the next 18 months, we hope will further foster the focus uh, and, and activity in this area and raise the profile of wounds in Wales.